Hey guys, Cubmaster AJ here, hanging out at beautiful Spring Creek Campground in the Payette National Forest. We are about an hour um, north of Weezer, uh, about two hours from the um, Boise Valley. Uh, this campground, there's about six spaces that are reservable. It usually reserves pretty far in advance. Um, and it's rather affordable. I think for the weekend, I think we're like 35 bucks with all the fees that are involved reserving online. Um, there are first come first serve spots, but usually summertime those are few and far between. So um, I've got uh, Scout Greg behind the camera today. Um, he's going to swing the camera around so you can see him. There he is. <coughs> We're uh, testing out his new GoPro um, that he got for um, birthday, Christmas. 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 You got it for Christmas. And we just haven't really had a lot of chances. Faces up here. There you go. <laughs> we haven't had a lot of chances mm. to take it out um, and give it a shot. So um, I have a lot of people ask, what exactly do you do when you just go camping by yourself? Um, when you're not bringing 20 families for the Cub Scouts with you. And um, I'll show you. First of all, I have no trailer with me. Um, which is kind of nice. So there's a lot more spaces I can get into that um, rather than taking our, our 10 foot cargo trailer with us. Um, I will take that with us when we get into late season camping um, as kind of a backup plan. If it's too cold or if it gets wet, rainy, snowy, um, then being in a tent, but um, faces up here. Why are you making it up? <laughs> But uh, uh, typically, I can hands. fit everything that we need to for a weekender, for Greg and I, in the back of our SUV. Um, and most families can do the same, um, especially if you've got a large SUV or if you've got um, a minivan. Um, you can usually fit almost everything you need. So our tent, we just have a standard um, Costco six-person tent. <clears throat> This is this ver year's version of the Costco 10. It's just a 10 by 10. Um, we generally, like last night, we were able to sleep with the rain fly off. Um, I woke up at midnight kind of freaked out thinking that we had rain even though the forecast was clear. Um, and it was just uh, these gorgeous trees above us. Um, the wind caught uh, some needles or there's some fuzzy caterpillars that are kind of a problem up here. Um, it just came falling down onto the uh, mesh of the roof without the rain fly on there. It had me a little bit panicked, but we were fine. Um, generally, when Greg and I camp together, we camp on cots. Um, it's way easier. I sleep a lot better. If you have a larger family, that's probably an issue, unless you have a larger tent. But um, I've done the air mattress thing, and we probably went through 10 air mattresses. Uh, between my wife and I and Greg before we finally said um, to heck with it, we'll just do cots when we can. We also have a queen size cot um, that the wife and I can set up on and we also carry a four or a six inch uh, three fold uh, memory foam mattress um, when we take the trailer and that's actually a full size mattress that fits wall to wall um, and takes up about two thirds of the trailer for when we do late season camping. Um, the tent's a mess because we slept in last night. Um, we didn't uh, bother to organize it for our camp tour, um, but it looks like a typical scout camp tent um, disaster. So um, we we'll skipped that for today. But what I did want to talk about is our um, patrol box setup. So when I first got into camping with the kid, camping with the family, um, having spent uh, my entire youth in scouts. Um, we always had the trailer or the pickups with big, huge, heavy pine wood patrol boxes. And um, those require four people to move them. And I, as much as I wanted to go that route, it just didn't seem to make sense. So uh, let me show you what we ended up with.
So we have consolidated all of our uh, camping gear into six of these black and yellow totes. And these are the, I think they're like two for eight bucks at Costco. You can get them at Biomart, you can get them all over. Um, but they're labeled and they nest um, with seats folded down um, across the back seat portion of my rig. Um, so they don't take up a ton of space but everything that I need for camp operations outside of sleeping gear in a tent, um, I can fit into these. So if you come in closer, I'll show you kind of how they break down. Um, the important one that everyone wonders about is food. Now, when Greg and I go camping, we typically stick to backpacking freeze-dried food um, just for simplicity. So I carry a stove, water, and a kettle, um, and plastic silverware. And that really sums up what we need um, to function uh, food-wise. Um, so we'll do something fun like um, tomorrow morning, probably biscuits and gravy. Um, we've got uh, a wide assortment of um, chicken and dumplings, um, probably, or chicken and rice. We've got teriyaki beef. Um, this one from Backpacker Pantry is a pad thai with chicken. This one's particularly good. Um, but uh, it comes in rather in the sauces. And Backpacker's Pantry is more meant for um, quality of experience rather than longevity. So Mountain House will sit on the shelf for 25 years, no big deal. Um, Backpacker's Pantry, I think this one's good through uh, November of next year. So this one has uh, crushed peanuts, lime juice, sriracha, and peanut butter in addition to the, uh, the noodles in there. Um, so it's a pretty impressive uh, dealio, but you can usually get two to three servings out of these. This is what we stick to for our main meals. With, um, we usually have like granola bars or beef jerky, stuff like that as far as snacks for the trail and what have you. Um, but I don't go all out on um, big uh, fresh food kind of cooking um, when I go camping. Um, it's just by the time um, pots and pans and all the food and ice and all the space all that takes up um, generally it exceeds the cost of just grabbing one of these meals for for that meal and usually the two serving plus a side Greg and I can usually that's sufficient for us to eat um, I do say Greg and I my wife loves the weekends that we're gone um, she stays home with the dog and uh, does starfish and chill and uh, Greg and I just get to enjoy some time out in the wilderness, uh, just kind of being men. So, um, Vienna sausages, these are gross by themselves when they're cold. Um, but if you pop a couple of these into one of your freeze dried meals um, about two or three minutes before you're ready to serve it, they'll heat right up. It's a great uh, protein source. And these things are good for, well, it looks like two or three years. Don't twist the camera like that. <laughs> Um, they're good for a couple years in your in your gear. Um, oatmeal, grits, those sort of things, what we typically stick to for mornings. Um, coffee, I think I'm good because I have another box of these. These are from um, Costco, and it's actually pretty decent coffee for coming out of the pouch. It's their Starbucks um, via Instant. But I have enough coffee here for probably the next 15 years, so we're not going to buy any more of that. Um, I do stick to dry creamer. Um, just because, again, ice is an issue. Um, and then we just have regular smaller snacks that we supplement that with. Um, I do have Folgers because I, I camp with some folks that actually enjoy this and I do not. But, um, you know, it's to each his own. Uh, drink mixes. We do a lot of drink mixes because really the only thing that we're bringing with us is bottled water. Um, we might have some sodas on the way in, but for the time that we're here, usually we're camping at elevation. We need the water. Um, otherwise that horrible uh, elevation headache kicks in. Um, and then we've got some trail snacks. We'll do cliff bars or uh, uh, protein gel, something like that, if we're doing a high endurance kind of uh, trip. But these we don't need at home because again, high protein, high calorie. So unless you're actually working out, uh, you can put on some weight pretty quickly with those. Um, so that's our food bin and that one, uh, no refrigeration whatsoever. Um, so we'll leave that one usually with the lid on inside the vehicle. Um, it's a lot less likely for the animals to try to get into it as well. 
uh, cookware. Cookware, this one is kind of morphed all over the time. So I do have uh, backpacking, uh, it's kind of car camping, um, pots and pans. Um, you can kind of see it, but that's my hard end I set. Um, everything's nesting, so if I want to, I could I could do a, a pretty decent uh, setup as far as some fresh food um, if we want to splurge for a night. Um, but cooking spray, we've got a small cutting board. We typically do paper plates, paper bowls. Um, we carry along, it uh, looks like I've got two things of uh, heavy duty tin foil at this point, which is super helpful. Uh, scratch that, I have three things, three rolls. <laughs> of uh, heavy duty um, tin foil, which is great if you don't have pan lids. You can use that as a pan lid instead. Uh, solo cups, we've got some uh, reusable cups if we want to. Um, and then clear down at the very bottom, we've got our uh, mess kits. Um, if we're eating something that's hot, we'll usually go that route. Uh, but, uh, the majority of our freeze dried stuff, we just eat directly out of the pouch or we dump it into a paper bowl. So the whole thing uh, is disposable at the end of the day. A uh, big roll of um, plastic bags. Um, we've got our plastic bag posted on a nail that's on the, the tree that was here before we got here. And it's actually, that tree's been kind of messed up. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to put a nail into a tree um, with uh, trying to leave no trace. But uh, in that case, it was already there, so we went that route. Um, into our personal care. Um, we completely forgot that we had so much... Uh, uh, toilet paper left over from last year before COVID hit. Um, so we've got uh, some basic items, uh, scalp spray, uh, usually our uh, sunscreen is in here as well, um, some wipes, um, paper towels, just bulky stuff that we put in there. Um, again, like uh, these are uh, uh, germicidal uh, hand wipes and then uh, baby wipes. If you're not camping with baby wipes, you're a monster. They are so helpful um, to, uh, to have as far as uh, uh, keeping everything clean uh, throughout your body. Um, it's, uh, it can be especially uh, rough um, on longer backpacking trips. So um, if you want, you, can, you don't have to take the whole pouch. You can grab a bunch, throw them in a Ziploc bag. It'll keep them wet for the duration of your trip. But uh, there's that. Uh, this is kind of a catch-all box. Uh, we don't really have anything identified in it at the moment, but it's mainly bug stuff at the moment. So, um, and bug stuff, batteries. We've got some hygiene stuff, just little mini uh, uh, toothbrushes. The bowls that didn't fit in the other box. We've got some paracord. Um, this little thermocell unit um, works surprisingly well. Back out, Greg. Works surprisingly well. It takes a fuel, a little butane fuel cartridge, and then a uh, piece of felt that slides in there that's got some chemical on it. It does pretty decent for you know picnic table worth of mosquito repellency. Uh, it is a little spendy, but I don't like bugs. Um, I also keep all of my mantles in here uh, for our propane lantern, um, along with some other stuff. Another one that kind of got out of hand over time that we just uh, decided to just throw them all in a box is all of our tarps. So we fold up our tarps so that they all fit in here. So I've got a tarp underneath the tent. I've got another one that we kind of set up as a doormat. Um, all of those will fit in there, no, no problem whatsoever. And then games, tent accessories, miscellaneous camping, all of this fun stuff. So obviously we've got to have some issues of boys' life in here. Um, pretty awesome. Paracords all over the place. Um, we carry our hatchet. We've got some carabiners. We've got lots of extra tent stakes. Uh, looks like we've got some more uh, hand wipes down there. Um, shoe spray is surprisingly helpful when you are uh, uh, roughing it all day long and then you get into your tent and take your socks off, take your shoes off, and it stinks up the whole tent. So uh, a couple sprays of that uh, really knocks it down, makes it to where it's a little more tolerable. Um, you carry along a solar panel with a USB port on it so you can charge your phone, uh, which is kind of helpful. Good to have that. Uh, I think i got a mirror in there as well. Um, pull start fire that one's a blast so you can get that one on Amazon and um, it comes in a brick you get three of these to a box and they're a little spending I think they're about 15 bucks for the box but uh, you've got the green string that you wrap around the log so it doesn't go away when you try to pull the string you have the red string that you pull that actually activates it 
Um, and it uses red phosphorus, so kind of like a road flare. But uh, you put this underneath the wettest, soggiest, mushiest wood you've got, and uh, it'll catch it on fire and get you a nice roaring campfire going. Um, we use those kind of more as a, hey, look at what we can do. And uh, I think we used a wood badge uh, last year as kind of a, a kickoff for uh, the instructional campfire. A uh, big first aid kit, we always bring Big Red Ugly with us. Um, that thing gets used every single camp out, um, whether we're out with scouts or with family. Um, and that one's a little bit higher end, so we've got a lot more sprints, sprains, um, a lot more chemicals in it than a standard um, first aid kit, which we keep in the vehicle as well. So I think we actually carry two. Plus there's, I think, a miniature one in here. Um, we just we tend to not like to be caught uh, um, off guard. Um, I've got standard cooking tools. They're all fold up. Um, this is a Camp Chef version. So I've um, got a griddle spatula, a knife, tongs, um, and a scoop. I use this a lot when I'm doing Dutch oven stuff. So if I'm doing cobbler, um, i got to chop up the butter, um, uh, the move around all of the uh, charcoal briquettes. I'll use the, um, the tongs. All that rolls up and folds together, not a big deal. Um, I did graduate to this larger um, uh, pot. I just have both of them with me. I have the old kettle with me. I like the old kettle because it actually whistles. Um, but uh, propane lantern, that one actually stores within a case. Um, I've gotten quite a bit of time out of that one before I broke the globe this uh, past summer. Uh, but the globe was cheaper than buying a replacement lantern. Lots and lots of hand sanitizer all over right now. Um, because coronavirus is a thing, so I think we've got four or five flavors of hand sanitizer right now. Um, we upgraded to this uh, Camp Chef Teton the two burner stove. Um, it's got a built in igniter. I had a Walmart brand stove for the better part of 15 years, and um, it was just time to, to move to something nicer. This one has quite a bit more heat output. Um, we were able to run the kettle to get, uh, we did grits this morning, and then we also did coffee um, in the kettle. That thing popped open and started whistling about twice as quickly as the old stove did. And we also had the other burner going, um, trying to warm up Greg, because um, it was way quicker.